Hello class, welcome to our first lecture. Uh, in this video, I wanted to, well, of course, get into our first lecture and uh, start our course content, um, but talk a little bit about how I'm designing uh, our Canvas course, the lectures in the course, and where resources are, and, you know, kind of my suggestions for how to um, proceed. Uh, but anyways, here um, you can see um, what, you know, our typical lecture page will look like. It should start off with the chapter, um, each section is kind of how I've organized the videos, uh, and they'll be in an order that should make sense and flow very naturally through, um, the content for that chapter. Um, but what I wanted to mention is that sometimes I'll be using slides, uh, or handouts in those videos, uh, and if you wanted to either print them out or download them or use them, those are available to you. Uh, you won't, you don't necessarily have to, because you can probably follow along with everything without needing that, but it's good to have for reference. Um, and I say probably the best way to go about everything uh, is to print out the handouts, uh, work on them um, as, as I'm working on them, or you know, work on them at your own pace, or kind of work on the extra problems, um, just as practice. Now, of course, you're gonna have a lot of practice with the online homework too, so uh, I'm not saying you need to, to fill in those because they're not graded or in anything. They're all just um, extra resources um, if you want to use them, um, as well as having the slides saved. In the slides, there's a lot of, um, you know, some of the most important information, kind of summaries, formulas, things that are, are useful. And a lot of times I'll be using the slides in my videos to um, discuss certain content and things, which it's, you know, easier to um, work from the slides instead. Anyways, um, so yeah, I would recommend getting those things first and then, you know, watching them in order. And as you're working on each section, uh, what I recommend doing is also going and working on the homework. So, um, you know, what I recommend is probably having two tabs open, um, logging into your web assign, um, and simultaneously working on the homework. So how I've arranged the assignments in web assign, um, is, uh, for each section. So, um, in Canvas, uh, and this is because when I first created the course, we weren't planning on having it fully online. This is before um, everything switched over. Uh, and, and usually we have individual homework assignments, which are consisting of written problems and submitted in person. But since we've transitioned to online homework, those assignments, I decided to just break them down into each individual section because I think that that's easier. But that's why it says homework 1, 2.1, 2.3, 2.4. 2 but basically that usually would have been just homework set one, whatever. And anyways, you can kind of ignore that. It doesn't, it really has no meaning anymore aside to, to me. Um, but anyways, my point here was as you're watching the videos, you can simultaneously work on, uh, the homework set, which, um, should look something like this. Um, and it should correspond pretty directly to, um, the videos. Now you could watch every, all the videos before you start, um, before you start working on that homework assignment for the week, um, or you could, um, you could, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second, or you could, you know, watch them one at a time. Some of you may choose to work on the homework first and then watch the videos if you get stuck, or, I mean, it's online, it's up to you how you wanna do it, but um, what I recommend doing is using our class time Friday and Monday where we're not meeting live uh, to watch videos and it and basically like going to class. So for example, and this is how I've designed it for Friday. This is kind of like our class period for Friday. Um, watch the videos and work on the homework um, during that time. Now you probably won't be able to do everything in one hour, um, for, you know, because homework is, you know, usually it's taken outside of class time. So um, the, with the lecture videos and the um, online homework, that's kind of that's not going to necessarily be doable in the time frame. It will really depend, uh, but that's gonna that's gonna be uh, the optimal design. That's anyways. That's how I've been creating things to flow um, and to try to make everything as you know low confusion as possible for for y'all. Um, anyways, let's get into uh, chapter two. Chapter lecture. three is all about functions. So the first section we're going to look at an introduction and talk about uh, some some basics, getting into some graphing um, and other properties in these first few videos. 
Um, but the to begin with, the mathematical function is basically just a relationship between two quantities. And it's something that we can be very familiar with uh, in the real world because uh, most relationships are functions. So there's, there's what's called a relation and a function. A function is a, a direct correspondence where it's like if something happens, there's a, a direct relationship from that. It's like cause and effect. Uh, and often we refer to the variables in such an equation as dependent and independent uh, variables. Uh, and, you know, a function is a type of mathematical equation. Um, but basically, it's defined to be a correspondence that assigns each element from one set into another. So, like in a mathematical set, just a group of things. Um, it basically, we're talking... Let's just jump into an example because I feel like I'm struggling to explain the basics of what I'm talking about. But basically, one set of the function is called the domain or the set of inputs, and the range is the set of outputs, uh, where that would be like cause and effect, uh, and it would be the uh, relationship between one group of things and another. So let's say the domain of our function is set to be 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and so on. Uh, and the range is set to be Giants, Red Sox, Royals, Cubs, and Astros. Um, and so if you're just looking at these two things, not, and this is not a mathematical function, it's just I'm trying to create, uh, illustrate a real example of the correspondence. Basically, we can see that, well, you could probably guess that on the left-hand side, uh, the domain is a set of years, uh, and the range is a set of baseball teams. If you're not a sports person, maybe you don't really know this correspondence, but basically you could then, the, the question I would typically ask if we were in a live class is, does anyone know what this function is or what what is this correspondence? And you might guess maybe it's the uh, correspondence between what uh, the who won the World Series in what particular year. So we could design a function which would take the input, the year, and give us an output, who won the World Series. And we could call that function f, or typically we use a letter um, to course, to describe our entire function. Uh, and the function would often il illustrate a phenomenon. Like in math, it might be, well, take a number, multiply by four and add three, and that the result would be your output of the function, where the input is the input number. Um, Whereas in this case, our function is not like a mathematical calculation, uh, but it, instead it would take the input, which is what is the year, and grind through that and tell us, well, what is the output, uh, the winner of the World Series in that particular year? Um, and sometimes we use uh, what we call an arrow diagram uh, to illustrate the correspondence. We typically don't do this with mathematical functions, but basically a domain, uh, the domain is the set of inputs so uh, in this case, we're given these values, 2018, whoops. And the range is the set of baseball teams. And basically we would draw an arrow where which would illustrate the correspondence from each set of the do each element of the domain to each element of the range. So, and this is something you probably don't know, and I hope I remember this correctly, but in 2012, the Giants won the World Series. In 2013, the Red Sox. 2014, the Giants won once again. 2015, the Royals won. 2016, uh, the Giants won again, I think, or was that the year the Cubs won? And so... You know, I could always go double check this <laughs> relation, uh, but there was something about how, you know, list of World Series winner. And let's see if we, can, if we could come up with. Uh, so it was the Cubs in 2016, the Astros in 2017, and the Red Sox in 2018. Okay, so yeah, I've, I had forgotten, I had to double check. But I think you get my point in that we have a certain correspondence um, between two things. That's the idea of a function. Now, th the whole point of this illustration was to illustrate a few things, things that are allowed in a function and things that are not allowed. In a function, again, in a mathematical function, every input has to be what, what we say well-defined. If there is an input, there has to be an output. 
Like, for example, one thing that wouldn't make sense for the domain would be, say, for example, 1402. Um, because in 1402, baseball didn't exist, as far as I know. Uh, and so we won't, don't have a World Series champion, right? It's like if we were to throw that into our function machine, a machine that calculated and ran through uh, and found the answer, uh, we wouldn't have a way of doing that because it just is invalid. And so we'd say that is not part of the domain. Or another, you know, other types of numbers that would not be in the domain, say, for example, uh, 2012.3, like a decimal number or a fraction or certain types of numbers might not make sense in certain functions and certain other types of numbers might make sense. Or of course, uh, 2022, um, that is something we don't know yet. So, uh, and we're obviously in our course, we're gonna be focusing on mathematical functions as opposed to functions like this, where you can f take the domain, run it through a formula, find the answer. But baseball is a little bit more complicated uh, and there's not a simplistic formula which would tell you who's going to win the World Series. There are ways of predicting and statistical models that can give you more likely outcomes and less likely outcomes, but, you know, we don't really know until it happens. Um, and sometimes there's other things that influence winning and scandals like the Astros in 2017 was a pretty big scandal with that win. So would you put an Astrosonic or whatever? Not going to worry about that. And also thinking about the range, so the domain has very specific conditions sometimes where certain numbers are not allowed. Same thing goes for the range. Now this is not a mathematical range because usually in a mathematical function, you take a set of numbers and the output is another set of different numbers with the de dependent on f of x. Um, but like in this, in this case, we'd have the, the range should strictly be set of baseball teams. Like you wouldn't want to put for example, the Lakers in there, it doesn't make sense because they're not going to win the World Series uh, anytime soon, at least. Or, you know, you wouldn't want to put five, that wouldn't make sense either. Or one other thing that will never be in the range of this particular function would be the Padres. Uh, and this is a San Diego joke because I'm a San Diegan and the Padres are always nice and embarrassing. And this was a really, really elaborate setup at that joke. Um, but anyways... Uh, I think you get the idea about domain and range. Also, this like when, when we're looking at this, this is just a this isn't necessarily the whole function. This is just a little snippet of the function to help us understand this relationship. But a lot of times there's other numbers, right? Like there could be 2019, 2020, or values going into the past, which you know, if we extend or open up that domain, it would also open up the range and add more teams into it. But again, never going to be the Padres.